Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, no supporter stream tonight. I had another engagement, so I thought I'd do this nice little premiered video today. Uh, this is an article that was sent to me by Dan H. Thank you for this, Dan. And I thought this was important enough to merit its own video rather than putting it in with the regular weekly news roundup. As this is relating to rooted phones and banking software. And if I had a title for this video, I might say, hey, do your banking on Linux not on your phone. So what's going on here? Well, when you root your phone, and this deals with a couple different areas, and some people often talk about, you know, rooting your phone and things. There's a difference between rooting your phone and having a custom ROM, okay? And you can have a custom ROM without the phone being rooted. In general, I am not a huge advocate of rooting your phone because it allows root access to be run on anything on that device. And that could, in and of itself, be problematic. But running a custom ROM is a very good thing to do because you can control what is in the system. I like Lineage the best because it gives you ADB root, which means I can still access the system provided I know the passcode to the phone, I can enable it inside the developer settings, and I can enable myself to get in there and do some small changes, which means I can add a custom host file to my phone to block trackers, to block ad networks, to block things like Facebook and stuff like this, which is very important, but I can then turn that off and make sure that the phone is is not rooted any longer. Now, the thing about running a custom ROM is not all, but many custom ROMs, well, all of them to install will require you to unlock the bootloader. Some ROMs do not have the necessary permissions to relock the bootloader when you're done. Some of them have, some of them haven't. Like Copperhead back in the day had the ability to relock the bootloader, which is definitely better than I'm doing with Lineage where I can't. I think it's possible to. I just don't really care to because I don't use my phone for anything important anyway. But what's going on here is a lot of your custom ROMs, most of them do not have the option to lock the bootloader and so the bootloader stays unlocked. The problem is many apps are starting to roll out now which are going to start suggesting to you that uh, if they sense an in a vulnerability like an unlocked bootloader they simply will refuse to run and what is going on here is there's several financial and banking apps for phones but there's also things like Pokemon Go Fate Grand Order are also refusing to run it's not because it's rooted it's because of the unlocked bootloader so there's an application um, uh, Magisk I think it is which would basically hide the fact that the bootloader is unlocked and thus allow these applications to run even if you were either rooted or running a custom ROM. But in some of the latest versions, Google confirmed back in May that they are, they are basically identifying and blocking this app from showing its status, which means that Google is now pushing something in the back end of the phone, which is going to prevent you from hiding the fact that your ROM is custom or rather that your bootloader is unlocked is what it boils down to. Now, for me personally, as I said, I like having the customized phone. I don't care if my bootloader is unlocked because I use my phone for looking at the news articles, syncing that to my next cloud account, and I might snap the odd photo here and there. And I do use K9 Mail to, to check email, although that usually gets cleared every day. So frankly, there's nothing on my phone that's a serious risk. I'm not all that concerned. But I would never sit there and be running banking applications on my phone because running banking applications gives them a whole lot more information than you would like. You're giving them full access to all location data, all the different aspects, many parts of things that are on your phone, and a lot of other services, including they oftentimes in those applications, they'll tie in the Facebook links, so all that stuff gets tied into Facebook. They'll tie in the Google, they'll tie in the data analytics firms, and you have pretty much no control over what's going on. So uh, for me, honestly, this is not something that seriously impacts me because I don't recommend using your phone is anything more than a basic communication device to do simple communications anyway. 
Now, if you're using Signal, this should still continue to work, I would hope. If Signal does not continue to work on a rooted phone, you guys need to abandon Signal until they come to their senses. So I don't see them doing that anytime soon. But several applications are using this system, and I believe it's called SafetyNet. And there's an entire article here that was sent to me that's very worth the reading. I'm not going to go into all of it here, but I will link this article in the description. But what I want to tell you is instead a better method of doing banking. Now, about a year or two ago, I did an updated video to my banking system, which I've always done since I switched to Linux. I have one dedicated computer. No banking connections are done except for that one dedicated computer. Well, a, a couple years ago, I updated that and I switched that over to Peppermint. I was using Lubuntu, but I hated it. Um, it was actually kind of a nightmare to use. Switched over to Peppermint, and the reason I went with Peppermint is they have configured out of the box, so I didn't have to do anything differently. They have ICE applications. Now, ICE applications are something you can put this on other distros as well. I just went with the Peppermint because it's lightweight, it's easy to use, it already has that configured out of the box, and I generally like the operating system as it is. And so my banking system uses that. Now, why do I want to use ICE applications? It allows me to use the choice of browsers that I want to use between Firefox, Chromium, Vivaldi, and uh, there's one more in there, and I forget which one it is. And I believe with the latest version, they're starting to roll out more browsers as well. I'll let the people uh, developing the new ICE applications leave a comment about that. Um, down below. But what I like about it is it allows you to run, it, to basically take your banking application and put it in its own containerized system. Yes, I know that Firefox does support separate containerization now, but this allows you to take one, one um, website, put it into its own container, and then give it a menu item, or in my case, I throw it on the panel. So, you know, first little panel button, this is my primary bank. Second little panel item, this is my corporate bank. Third little panel item, this is an investment account. Fourth one, I think a PayPal account. So you end up do using a system that is exclusively designed for nothing more than banking. I don't browse the internet on it. I don't look up anything else on it. It is used exclusively for financial institutions. Now, you don't necessarily need a separate computer for that. Many people might be saying, well, I can't get an extra computer. No, I do it on a little thumb drive. And since there's so little data on that computer, once a month I do a full backup, not of the whole system, it doesn't matter. I can reset up the system in about a matter of an hour or so. I just take the relevant files, the relevant files. I have a uh, KeePass XC password list on there. So uh, I'm using that. I have a spreadsheet, which is what I use for financing rather than using the applications. Although I do also use GNU Cash for my business books. So I have business books over there keeping track of all the business end of things. I have a spreadsheet taking care of the personal end of things. I have a list of passwords and also I'll download the banking statements for the ones that I do online accounts for. Download the banking statements, keep all that in one separate location. Once a month, simply take a backup of the documents folder where everything is all saved and Boom, send that up to my master server as an encrypted file. That way, I'm keeping all my banking situation completely isolated from anything else and everything else. I have the ability to block all of the nasty ad trackers or things, everything in its own container, so that I don't actually, you know, none of my financial institutions could possibly use any cookie connections to figure out any other financial institutions, and I block a lot of those other features up there as well. There's no email that gets checked on that, um, although you could probably go in and add an email account and definitely have a separate email account for your banking if you can, and if you can control that domain, all the better. Definitely worth it. But uh, I wanted to identify that to say that if you are using a custom ROM with an unlocked bootloader or a rooted device, you may find coming up soon that your financial institution's applications will not work on your phone any longer. This is called a blessing. You shouldn't be doing that stuff with your phone anyway. It's too insecure. It's too susceptible to tracking and hacking definitely want to do that. So do your banking on Linux. I'll go ahead and link in the description down below my banking computer setup so that you can kind of see what I'm doing with Peppermint. I'm just using a basic lightweight. Everything is encrypted out of the box. So it requires the, uh, the encryption key to unlock the 
uh, unlock the the encryption on the hard drive and then it requires of course the the user login as well so two passwords to get into the system everything else on there is encrypted further as well all the passwords are in keypass xc so that everything is is all pretty ultra secure on that one system which runs on a little ten dollar usb hard drive just make sure you save a regular copy of that in case anything goes goofy with that and if the hard drive gets lost or stolen everything's super encrypted anyway so it's all good well at least until the government takes away our ability to encrypt things and then i guess i'll just be a rebel so anyway that's my thought um good article there have a read through that thank you bill for sending that to me and uh we will see you guys next time i hope that you enjoy switching to linux and thank you for all of the supporters that help keep this channel running